from Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And then in Romans 13, 1 through 7, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear or the one in authority? I mean, of the one in authority, sorry about that. Then do what is right and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. You read so wonderfully, you must be from Enfield. Amen. I will, I will try not to keep your attention for too, too long, but I'm glad that we prayed. Aren't you glad that we prayed today? Amen. Praise God. Turn to your and tell them, Jesus has all authority. Should we say it again? Say it again. Jesus has all authority. I don't know about you, but that, is, that makes me feel so good. Amen. With his authority, he commissioned his church. And he says, continue my mission. One of the reasons why Vision 2024 says, first seek the kingdom or his kingdom and his righteousness is because this is the command of Jesus. Amen. And we expand his authority into the world through the spreading of the good news called the gospel. Amen. And Jesus is the source of the church's authority. Jesus is the source of the church's authority. The church's authority is rooted in him and him alone. Say it with me. In Jesus and Jesus alone. Not from a human authority, but from his authority. Amen. A church must give an account to Jesus. And the church's authority is not to control or to dominate this world, but to serve uplift and advance the kingdom of god vision 2024 first seek the kingdom and its righteousness right of matthew 6 33. humility is the foundation of authority say with me humility is the foundation of authority i want us to look together at matthew chapter 20 Verses 24 through 28, I have a lot of scripture, and hopefully we get through all of it tonight. Let me, let me just rephrase that. We will get through it tonight, even if we're going to be here a little longer. Because I want us to build on this understanding that we have authority in Jesus. This story comes from Matthew chapter 20, where the mother of two disciples came to Jesus and asked for authority. Let me remember that story, for the, especially those who were with us on, on a Monday night. 
Read, read from verse 24. When the ten heard about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentile of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high official ex exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Oh, what do you mean? Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. You want to know what the, what the original Greek says here in, for servant? Slave. How'd you know? Good. <laughs> if you want authority, you must become a servant. You must become a slave. Oh, we hate that word. I, I don't know about you, but I hate that word slave. I don't even like the word servant. In the Greek, it's um, in, in, the, in the strongest dictionary, it's a word 1410 if you want to look it up. It says slave. It really does. I don't like that word. Because in this world, if you get authority, you are honored. Amen. But in, in the kingdom of God, you want to be great? You must serve somebody. You want to have authority? You want the gifts of the Holy Spirit? They're for the building. They're to serve somebody else. Many want to be prophets for to be called the prophet of God. But one of the things that they don't, they don't understand, you're there to serve. Some people want to become pastors. And when you are a pastor, I can tell you from my personal experience, you must serve. You must love. Sometimes people aren't very lovable. And one, one pastor once said that sheep bite. I've been, I've been bitten a few times. I could tell you that for him. <laughs> you want to serve? Then you get authority. If you, want to be, if you want to have authority, then you must serve. Some people just want a name. Some people want a status, a title. Serve. Verse 27, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to serve, to be served, but to serve and to give life as a ransom for many. Humility is the foundation of authority. Jesus taught this. His disciples spoke this. And Jesus wanted his disciples to consider, consider others more valuable than themselves. Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 2, write this down so you can read this at home later. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. I'm just going to give you verse number 7. Reminds us that Jesus came with authority but in his authority, he became man, even to the point of being a slave, a servant. When you read Philippians chapter 2, you will see that Jesus took on not only our nature as a human being, he became the lowest of lowest so that anyone can come to him. So we say amen. Jesus became a servant. I'll, I'll push it. Jesus became a slave to humanity. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11 tells us that, therefore God, help me out here, therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. When Jesus lowered himself, he got a name above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus went low to go high. Jesus became a slave, a servant, in order to become our master. And in Matthew, the first part that Darlene so wonderfully read, Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20, Jesus says that all authority belongs to me. Say it with me, all authority belongs to Jesus. And he gives that authority to us as the church. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. 
He gives us that authority. But in order for us to have that authority, we must humble ourselves. We must serve others in order to have the same authority that Jesus has. Many times I am asked, Pastor, how come when you pray over people, things happen? Because I give him all the glory. I'm here to serve. Remember that C word, that COVID word? I went to people's houses. I can speak freely about this now. Some of your houses I've been to when you had COVID. I went and I prayed over you. I laid my hands, anointed you with oil. I wasn't afraid of that thing. You know why? Because I was there to serve. Amen. Some of us were afraid to come to church. Even when that, that sea was over, some of us are still afraid to come to church, unfortunately. But Jesus has authority, and he gave that authority to us. Romans chapter 13, the, the first seven verses that Darlene so wonderfully read, reminds us that government is instituted by God to maintain order. But it also reminds us that government authority is limited. And ultimately, the government's authority comes from God, and they must give an account back to God. Guess what happens when authorities step over their line? God steps in. But the ch we as the church, we must humble ourselves, pray, seek his face, and then he acts. Amen? See, church generally submits to government in and it humbles itself. Amen. Most of us follow laws. Most of us follow, uh, follow and honor our leaders as long as they align with God's commands. Amen. When government, when government's directive is in conflict with God's word, the church in humble submission to God, who is the ultimate authority, must respectfully refuse to comply. If you remember the first um, church, they were preaching the gospel. They got beaten, put in jail. Then they were released, brought before the government, and, said, and they said strongly, do not preach the name of Jesus. And in Acts chapter 5, verse 29, we read, Peter and the apostle replied, we must obey God rather than human being. In other words, when the government authority goes against his authority, his authority is above. Amen. Amen. But that does not mean, that does not mean we will not face opposition. I'm saying things very gently because this is going to go on YouTube. Take the story of three Jewish men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. As found in Daniel chapter 3, verses 16 through 18, we're going to go there together. The decree came from the government to bow before a statue. And church, I know we're not there yet, but it, this may happen in the near future where we may need to bow and we must understand and give an answer the same way Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied. Starting with verse 16. King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace. The God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your, from, from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Church, a time may come where you may need to make a decision whether you obey the government and go against God 
or you obey God and face the consequences. I know we live in America and we have freedoms and praise God for those freedoms. Keep them as long as we possibly can. Amen. My family, my grandfather in particular, served time in jail for the name of Jesus. And he did it humbly. He did it humbly, respecting the authority that was over him at that moment because God allowed that authority over him at that moment. And Brother Johnny prayed today for the suffering church, the persecuted church. All over the world, there's a persecuted church. Jesus and the apostles submitted to the authorities, but spoke up and were willing to face the consequences for upholding God's truth. A time may come where you need to speak the truth boldly, not caring, not worrying about the consequences, even if it is a fiery furnace as it was for our Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The consequences of not upholding God's standards, not upholding God's law, are worse than a fiery furnace. Amen. The church has a responsibility and the authority to proclaim God's truth, even if it's challenged by governmental laws or social norms. I mentioned earlier that even on Facebook, when questions are asked, I must reply gently, lovingly, because this is how they, they will know that we love them. But at the end of the day, the Bible says what the Bible says. God's laws are what God's laws are, and they are unchanging. God is not going to rewrite his book to accompany, to accompany your sin. Amen. Apostle Paul, being in jail, writing to the Ephesian church in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20, he says, Pray also for me that what, whenever I speak, words be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should apostle paul being in in jail being bound we are free amen thank god for we're free let's keep our freedom for a little while amen but even if we cannot freely speak like on youtube we cannot freely speak because if you freely speak on youtube your your account will get flagged your video will get flagged you'll get your account will be shut down it's slowly starting to happen church we must realize that it's happening but if it does happen, speak the truth with love. Amen. And just like Apostle Paul says, pray for me. Church, I cover your prayers. Especially when I give an answer, it must be done gently, yet with authority in humbleness. Amen. For 2 Corinthians 5.20, we are reminded we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you in, on, Christ be, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Church, our, our authority is to reconcile others back to God. Amen. How do we do that? By us first being servants. Amen. We must serve somebody. We must love somebody. And we... Can only do that if we have the fruit of the Holy Spirit on display. Amen. We have the authority and the responsibility to pray for our leaders. Amen. We have the authority and the privilege to pray for our leaders. First Timothy 2 1 says, I urge you then, first of all, the petitions prayers intercessions 
and thanksgiving, how can I thank God for someone that's against me? Be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peacefully in quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. We don't pray against something, we pray for something. Say it with me. I don't pray against something, I pray for something. Say it again with me. I don't pray against something, I pray for something. I pray that God would touch their heart. I pray that God would soften their heart. I pray that God would save them, not take them out of office, that God would touch them right where they are because God has placed them there. Amen? What does prayer do? I'm glad you asked. Thank you for asking. Proverbs 21.1 tells us, in the Lord's hand is the king's heart is a stream of water that he channels towards all that he pleases, all that pleases him. God can change a heart. Amen. How, how can God change a heart? Prayer, petition, intercession. When we pray, God does something. How many have ever had uh, a decree or a judgment against you and God changed it around? Oh, look around. Come on, wave, wave at me boldly. Okay, look around. Half of, half of us have seen God do that, okay? The other half needs to pray for us, and we pray for you as well, amen? A decree is not final until God puts his hand on it, amen? Authority isn't passive. It involves courageous stand for God's word. Listen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood firm. Say it with me. They stood firm. Regardless of the opposition, regardless of the consequences, they stood firm. And soon, church here in America may face opposition. Soon, the church here in America may face challenges. There are believers all over the world who face challenges, persecution. But we as believers must stand firm regardless of the decree. Going back to Daniel, Daniel chapter 6, we all heard the story of Daniel and the lions then. Sunday school, one of my favorite stories to, to hear in Sunday school besides Joseph. That was a beautiful story. I acknowledge you. But when a decree comes, well, let's, let's look at Daniel chapter 6, verse number 10. Now then, Daniel learned the decree had been published. It became a law. And the law was that you cannot ask anyone of anything, not God, not another human being, but the king. There must have been a long line outside the king's house. He went home. To his upstairs room, where he where, where the windows opened towards Jerusalem, three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to God, just as he had done. What happened to Daniel? He faced persecution. He was thrown into the lion's den. Was it comfortable? Was it comfortable? Absolutely not. Have you ever spent a, a night with a lion? Maybe you spent the night lying. That's a different lion. That's very uncomfortable too, by the way. <laughs> lying is very uncomfortable. I don't know if you know that or not. But Daniel never went away from what he had always done. Your job, my job, is to always humbly go before the throne room of grace because we know that that's where our authority is, regardless of the consequences. Come on, help me out here. Say, we, regardless of the consequences. Acts chapter 4. My best friend Peter again, verses 18 and 20. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach 
at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him? See, Peter, after getting touched by the Holy Spirit, after getting full of the Holy Spirit, he wasn't afraid. He was no longer afraid. Because if they kill this body, guess what? I get to see Jesus sooner. Amen. I know none of us want to die. Amen. Listen, nobody wants to die. Death is still the enemy. But Peter understood, and he says, should I listen to you or to God? You be the judge. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and what we have heard. Church, how many of us have seen healings, miracles, signs, and wonders? Look around the room. Just about everybody's hand is up. How can you stop speaking of God's goodness? Humbly with authority proclaim the name of Jesus. Today, while we still have our rights, it's time to intercede for a righteous leadership. It's time for us to pray to God to give us the right leaders while we have the, uh, the uh, freedom to do so. We have the authority to pray to God and humbly ask him to give us leaders that will be according to his heart. Amen. We must pray for leaders who value justice. We must pray for leaders who value righteousness. Or we must face the consequences of ungodly leadership. As for discernment. This is a gift of the Holy Spirit that's missing from the church. It is the gift of discernment. Ask God, if the leader that I am planning to vote for, are they a man or a woman of integrity, humility? Because while we have the authority and the freedom to vote, we must vote. When we do so, when we do so, not if, but when we do so, put on the whole armor of God. Let me bring you there. I'm going to finish up with the whole armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the powers of the dark of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. We don't fight against people. Amen. Therefore, help me out here. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day come the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then. With the belt of the truth buckled around your waist. With a breastplate of righteousness in place. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasion with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Even when you face jail time, pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given to so that I may freely make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I declare it fearlessly as I should. Church, our authority comes from us humbling ourselves before God. The prayer of a righteous person avails much. You want to be a mountain mover? Start humbling yourself before God. Get on your knees, go into your secret room, and pray. 
and your God who has who sees you in secret will reward you publicly let's go to God in prayer together father in the mighty name of Jesus I thank you for that authority that we have in Jesus Christ thank you that while we have freedom we can freely come to you and ask you for our leadership that you would touch them with your hand that you would affect the election in such a way that your perfect will be done not my will not the will of the Democrats not the will of the Republicans but your will be done on earth as it is in heaven God I thank you that you have placed your church and that authority comes from you Jesus and that we can boldly proclaim your name Jesus here in the United States of America God now I ask you that you would take my words and magnify them in the ears that heard the message tonight and those that will be watching online later and God to you be all the glory in Jesus name I pray amen go serve your king remember to be humble to be loving and serve your king well amen you are dismissed bless you